This video will serve as an analysis of the growing coding bootcamp world, but also give you a game plan for succeeding if you do want to make a career change. Many people begin earning around six figures after graduating, and I'll guide you to some free resources if you're interested. At some point, you may have seen claims made by the boot camps that they could help you receive a 100K a year salary in just 12 weeks. In any industry, if there are claims of fast wealth, get rich quick, or get rich easy, please spend some time really analyzing the opportunities as most will be false claims. In November 2011, a Hacker News post titled, Tell HN I Want to Teach You Web Development in eight weeks for free, sort of, by user Kabooks appeared. At the time, demand for programmers was so much higher than supply that tech companies were desperate for anyone that could finish FizzBuzz or display Hello World in a browser. The eight week course worked, which led Sharif Bichet to officially create Dev Bootcamp in February 2012 aimed at turning people with no experience in coding to job ready as a programmer in just 10 weeks. The first iteration worked. Of the 17 developers that were ready to go to work at the end of the program to date, 14 of them have secured job offers. That's 88%, with the average salary being $79,000. In any marketplace, when demand far outweighs supply and the outcome is large amounts of money, you will see an influx of people looking to take advantage. This is why so many gurus are popping up every single day selling courses in all of the make money online niches. The demand for making money fast is so high that all of these gurus can enter the market and still make money. And unfortunately, bad businesses can enter the space and take advantage of the vulnerable. After word got out that dev bootcamp graduates were receiving job offers, bootcamps began popping up everywhere. By the end of that year, 13 bootcamps existed nationwide. They essentially all followed the same template the marketing of the bootcamp centered around taking someone in a career they weren't interested in and turning them into a software programmer in under 12 weeks. These bootcamps mostly focused on front-end web development, and they wanted you to dedicate 80 or more hours a week to the program. At the time, software companies were more than happy with hiring junior-level programmers. This chart displays the number of computer science graduates in the US, and there was clearly a dip around 2008 that didn't recover for a few years. The boot camps were positioned well to graduate students and send them off into Silicon Valley programming jobs. With the success of the students, these boot camps could then focus their marketing efforts on testimonials from people like Jim, who went from being an elementary school teacher into a six-figure earner at a startup in San Francisco, or Sally, who went from being an Uber driver to a software engineer at a Fortune 500 company in San Jose. The value proposition for the boot camps was that they were offering students front-end web development, which is not traditionally taught in a computer science degree. The biggest advantages the coding boot camps have over four-year schools is that they don't have any bureaucracy surrounding their curriculum. If the job marketplace needs very specific skills, the boot camps will adapt sometimes by the next cohort. Tuition generally ranged from 12,000 to 24,000 depending on location and length of time of the course. Due to the success of the graduates, lending companies began offering loans to students at the boot camps. This allowed everyone looking for a career change to be able to afford to attend one of these programs. Some boot camps even offered the student an only pay if you get hired financing because they were so confident in the outcome. April 2015, I attend General Assembly's Web Development Immersive Program, 12 weeks, 80 hours a week, they told us it would be like drinking water out of a fire hose. They were absolutely correct. At the time, the job availability for junior programmers seemed to be drying up. Some of my classmates were able to find jobs as programmers, but a good portion didn't. The demand for entry-level positions was slowly meeting the supply. Back to our chart of computer science graduates. 2015 was a record year for the number of computer science graduates, and boot camps were graduating around 20 students every 12 weeks the market for entry-level positions was reaching a saturation point. This is when some of the ugly horror stories from coding boot camps began appearing online. Over the next two years, many large news publications wrote stories about how boot camps don't prepare their students for their careers, how companies aren't hiring from coding boot camps, and how many boot camp companies are shutting their doors. A lot of skepticism arose about the industry. Boot camps heavily rely on the instructors to carry out a successful cohort. A common problem with boot camps is that the instructors are generally strong engineers, but rarely have a teaching background. I believe that some of the animosity from former students towards the industry comes from students who unfortunately had instructors that weren't the best fit for their learning needs. Many of the graduates were getting employed at the boot camp they graduated from, which many felt was fudging the employment numbers. Additionally, many boot camp graduates returned to work at their previous employer, their previous career, or took jobs in other industries. The boot camps could use these numbers as employment numbers, which completely misled potential students into the actual numbers of employment 
as a software programmer. Official third-party reports were now needed on the success of students. This is still an unregulated industry, which means bad business practices can exist without any repercussions, similar to all the charlatans in the internet marketing space. The marketing of these programs still revolved around the income potential, how quickly you could attain the new job, and how many graduates were employed following graduation. CIRR was created in February 2017 to regulate the reporting standards of these boot camps to help eliminate all of the false claims and hype in the reporting. Here is all the data on the boot camps. The data will unlock the truth about students' job placement rate and income attained following completion of the course. A few months after the CIRR data became public, I was ready to jump back into programming and advance my career. I was a student of the remote part-time program at Hack Reactor. Hands down an amazing program. My experience was 10 out of 10 and would strongly recommend to anyone looking to take a boot camp. So now is the time to answer the question in the title of the video. Hack Reactor's main flagship campus in San Francisco boasts an average salary of 110,000 after graduating the course. This is not surprising to me. Their course is extremely rigorous, but 10 out of 10 in quality, and the results show. I've worked in software development for five years at a tech company that is now public, and I've attended two boot camps with two different curriculums, so I feel like I'm pretty credible when speaking about this subject. In case any of you are wondering, I had an interview with Facebook lined up for a software engineering position following the course. I thought hard about my future and decided that I was more interested in pursuing real estate investing and YouTube, and it didn't make any financial sense for me to move back to the Bay Area. I spent 20 grand on the course and never became an engineer, but it's not a total loss as I received a raise from my job because they knew of my attendance in the course. Here's the reality about coding boot camps in 2020. After the industry shakeup, only the best boot camps survived. If a boot camp has been operating for half a decade or longer by now, it's likely a good program with strong job placement rates. I personally am not a fan of the 12 week boot camp model and would not recommend it to anyone unless you have strong, extensive experience with programming or the industry already. And this is where the industry faces a financial dilemma. These boot camps need a certain amount of students in order to operate a profitable business, but not everyone is suited to spend 12 weeks coding 10 hours a day. So plenty of people go through these programs and graduate not ready to become an engineer. And the junior market just isn't there like it was when the boot camps first started. The boot camps placement rate suffers because of this, and that is where the boot camps get labeled as scams. The part time model that spanned nine months for Hack Reactor was significantly better for learning retention, deeper understanding of software engineering, and much more manageable stress levels. And we were all employed during the course, so we were able to pay our bills just fine. I was thoroughly impressed with the program. If you're interested in changing careers, I'll give you the exact game plan for how you can transition into tech as a software engineer. Step one is to maintain steady employment. In my opinion, the best way to transition into a new career is when you have your bills covered by work and you dedicate your free time to learning. Gaining skills is much easier when stress levels are low. Step two is to visit the GitHub for open source computer science degree and go through the courses. This GitHub contains almost all free resources for obtaining an online computer science degree for free. Yes, for free. The estimated time of completion for this is at least one year, probably two. Understand that this is not a get rich easy or get 100K a year salary easy. This is gonna take time. Step three is to become obsessed with learning computer science and programming such that you can't wait to get home from work in order to study all night long. Once you start dreaming about computer science and programming, then you'll understand it. That's what I used to go through. Step four is to attend a boot camp following completion of some or a majority of the open source computer science degree. You don't need to complete the entire degree template, but the more you complete Complete, the better your base knowledge will be of core fundamentals in this industry. I recommend a strong bootcamp because it will provide the necessary skills to begin writing production code for a company quickly after graduating. I would recommend attending a part-time bootcamp that is spread out over longer than 12 weeks as I personally don't believe in the 12 week firehose model. With this video, I'll do my best to address as many comments as I can. As I wanted this video to serve as an educational element, you know, if you're interested in changing careers, I would like to assist you. It is an amazing career. And if you are interested and obsessed with this idea of computer programming, software engineering, I would highly recommend this transition into a new career. I hope I earned your like for this video. Thank you so much for watching.